guys, this is Elise. I am a licensed professional counselor, a wellness coach, and a hobby artist. And um, I wanna welcome you back to my studio space. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to a little bit of a show and tell, um, as well as a little bit of a demo explanation. So I'll be sharing pages from my sketchbook, one of them. And I'm so excited, so thrilled to share this with you. I hope that it'll be fun for you, a nice little break in your day to um, have like an arts conversation. And, and then maybe you'll feel inspired to do a little creative self-expression too. Okay, so my first item in, I, sometimes I like draw directly on my sketchbook and sometimes I draw on something else and then I like stash it in. So um, the sketchbook that I chose to um, share with you is this one, which has lots of life drawing in it. For me, I always um, appreciated the teachers who informed me and mentored me to lay a really good foundation on whatever I do. Um, and so that's first and foremost, my, um, in my mind, my higher power and my parents um, who have always stressed the importance of having a good foundation. And the same goes for some of my most influential art teachers and mentors who have also really stressed a good foundation. So parts of having a good foundation are studying form, color, hues, like hues are like the white to black range and all the grayscale in between, um, line, and weight and and those kinds of the basic building blocks of what makes an image, what makes an object, what makes an experience, what makes art. Um, so in this study, um, I have a, a figure's hair and face. Um, this is a study of a master's artwork. I unfortunately did not label the back of my paper with the name of the artist and the name of the artwork, but um, you can probably tell that this looks like um, this looks like historical art that you would see in you know um, in the museums of like a statue or or a painting from um, some of the greatest periods of art. In art history in Western culture so that's um, a little sheet a little study of that um, these are some really quick sketches and you could tell that I did it really quickly because I used all um, I only use line to get the shading and the form of these different types of, uh, of joints and bones and I did that very quickly because I wanted to capture as much of it as I could um, in a very short amount of time. And over here, similarly, you know, all the all the lines are going in the same direction. I didn't really like what I was doing there, so I crossed it all out. Um, and yeah, so I, I mostly have it going the same direction, although to get that curvature, I needed to use more than one direction of a line. I'm just, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a master. So, you know, I have to use what I can. Um, when I'm when I'm drawing. Um, I've been super excited to share this other type of figure study, um, object study, artistic study type of drawing where you really get so acquainted with your eye, with your process, with the present moment to be super connected to whatever it is or whoever it is that you're drawing you don't really need to know them, like not in that kind of connection way, but more like in the process of art. Um, and so I was taught by a, a teacher, um, a method called blind drawing. And this probably looks like a lot of squiggles to you, again, because I am not a master, um, but these are figures. So like that's a nose leading to a mouth, chin, eyes, and the flowing hair, um, and and so in the process of doing blind drawing, um, I look at just the subject, 
the subject of my drawing. And I don't look at my page or the, the surface that I'm, that I'm drawing on or painting on for the duration of the drawing process. It's, uh, it's one way to really experience not being in control and yet ironically being in a lot of control. Like it's, it's, a, it's a really mindful, great experience. Um, at this point, you know, since I am sharing a, note, a sketchbook with um, like the figure and, and body parts and, and things like that, I should say this is probably PG. Um, my next drawing, so if you have any kids, like, go away or, like, fast forward or something um, in the video. So, um, actually, maybe I'll just, well, yeah. So, um, this is another, I'm just going to skip that page is what I decided. But maybe this next one is, is okay to share if you can't, you know, if you can't fast forward. So um, this next one, I did not draw. This is a photocopy, but I wanna share a different drawing technique and figure study technique. Um, so this is a photocopy of a master's artwork. And the technique I used to study um, the curvatures and the ways that muscles were like, are, are joined together and how they, how they move together, um, I overlaid some tracing paper on top and made this particular drawing um, surmising where with pencil where the bones might be like how are the bones moving and you know similar to what I was sharing before about having a really good foundation uh, you know all of us all of us humans we start with the bones on the very inside of us and then inside of our bones and around our bones are organs and tit, uh, a muscle, why can't I talk? Organs and muscles and ligaments and all these things that are traveling around. And, um, and that makes up our bodies and the wonder of human movement, the ability of anatomy. So um, yeah, in that particular study, I have, um, like a skeleton study underneath the skin to see how, how are the bones moving. Okay, and gonna skip that page two and that one too because they all have nude studies of models just in case, PG. Um, this is a study of then, you know, what I was just mentioning earlier on top of the bones are our muscles. So this is an arm from the front and the back. And these are images of a leg from the front and the back and the muscles underneath our skin. This is the torso, a human torso front and behind, um, masculine torso more studies of the body. This is a head, front and back. And um, to like better understand it, labeled it with like, you know, with, with the names of what those muscles are pointing to it. I did not memorize them all, um, <laughs> but it's really helpful to know and, and I think in the process of drawing it and studying it, I became more mindful and aware of my own body too, which is really great. Um, I feel more connected to myself. This is an image of um, another quick study. You can kind of tell because after getting kind of the outline of the whole thing, um, went into it with just the same direction of diagonal lines all going in the same direction to capture the shading and um, oh, then here's a few others that I'm gonna skip because they're more bodies. Um, and then this is a friend of mine that I drew again, a quick study just capturing. 
the general shading and the form. Um, these were really fun to do. So I took um, I, I took Master's Works as well to study from and used a single uh, single tone of color, in this case black, and um, this is of an oriental figurine. And just saw what I could do playing around with a water-based medium that is heavy laden with water. Like how much can I really control and how much can I really capture of the three-dimensionality of it. So that was really fun. I think I'll show you, um, you know, if I can find, no, I have lots of nude models. Okay, so at this point then, to keep it continuously PG and safe for anyone that might walk in the room, given that we are self-quarantining for the most part, um, at least at home, even, even frontliners have to get back home and um, everyone's just in the house, all the family members. So just in case, uh, we'll just skip the rest of the, the figure studies examples and I will share with you a self-care exercise that I did um, and and explain how you might use it too to take care of your own and um, your emotions and your thoughts in these times. So this is an activity called bridging the gap. So there's two sides to it. Um, on the one side, there is land, and then there's, and then there's like a cliff, and there's no connection. And then on the other side, there's more land, and kind of a cliff too. So you actually, or I start from here, and if you were to do it, you would also most likely start from here. Um, you start on one side or the other, wherever the stick figure is jumping off of. Um, and to start this, it's helpful to identify what is a negative emotion or negative experience or something that is kind of weighing me down that, um, that, could, really, that could really take some attention, um, some gentleness, some care, some compassion to help me move through it. So, um, for me, I think that, you know, in full disclosure, when I learned about COVID, it was when New York was really hit hard and people were panicking and buying toilet paper and it was flying off the shelves and there was like no bottled water and, and all this. Um, and, and it was ahead of the curve from the rest of the Midwest. So I, I learned about it then in terms of how serious this is. Um, and because I, I had heard a few things in the months before, but nothing that like really commanded my attention until um, February. So um, I, I feel like because I had to pivot so fast, my my like up downs and the process of adjustment um, happen a little bit with a quicker turnaround, I guess, or I mean, it, not quicker, but just sooner, a sooner turnaround um, to, to move forward and make some progression for myself personally um, than a lot of my, my friends or neighbors who caught wind of it and, and came to take it more seriously and uh, about what's going on a bit later, like in, in March late March and, um, and so on. So anyhow, so I did a little bit of reflection, um, for the sake of being able to share this with you as a self care skill, safe self care resource, something that you could try out. So, um, I remember when I first got wind of it and, you know, like nobody else around me physically was like really in tune with what was going on. Um, they, they, it just wasn't really on the news and, um, you know, so like there's, I'm not blaming anyone or anything like that. It was just, I just felt isolated and I kind of felt like powerless 
to make COVID go away. Like, there was nothing I could really do to, like, keep it on the East Coast. Like, keep it contained, basically. Not that I wanted them to suffer, but, like, just to keep it contained. There was nothing that I personally could do to, like, put a fence around it and, like, find a cure for it. Like, there was nothing that I could do. And it was a really powerless, vulnerable feeling to have. And and then as, like, the Midwest became aware of it and Ohio started to pivot um, and make some really great, you know, our, our leaders were taking some really great actions to protect the constituents and help everyone help ourselves and each other, you know, all these things happening. Um, there were still some, like, news pieces flying through about, like, people who were defying um, state orders, defying the the medical situation, the gravity of it all, going on, like, here, I, I think for you to be able to see it, I should come a little closer. Um, like, people like just, like, going on spring break, and... I was like, oh my gosh, like I have family members who are in, who are physicians, who are working in the medical field. And like at one point, like 20% of the COVID cases in Ohio were like healthcare workers. So I was like, oh my gosh, like due to like other people's lack of education or awareness or, or just like lack of compassion, like whatever it is, my, my family members might die. And, um, and then other people were like dropping, you know, like Italy had situations with mass graves and, and like carting the deceased in military tanks. And I mean, it's just so heartbreaking and heart wrenching and, and like it, it, it's, you know, it's a lot. It's overwhelming. So um, I just felt like like the storm was like not stopping. And I just felt like, I mean, I could stay home, but like the world around me might be like going in flames. And like at the same time, like then like once the stay at home orders were put into effect, then like everyone on the planet was online. So like connectivity sucked and like all these things. So like, and then also like I used to do prison ministry and um, brought like some art healing groups there and curriculum and like and like being aware of like how like prisoners their populations were like getting COVID like crazy are getting COVID like crazy and there's just this there's conversation about it like is keeping them in prison right now like a an unwarranted death sentence and you know there's just so many pieces to this conversation about every population because literally everyone is affected by this. So I I like I think the worst of the COVID situation for me was feeling powerless. And and then as I started to pivot towards the other side, the positive side, um a lot of things shifted for me, but I also noticed as I was like shifting to a place of I have choices. I can protect myself. I can choose who I trust. I can help and offer help to those around me and those I love. That includes neighbors and the community, not just friends and family. Like as I was pivoting, I noticed like, um, I mean, not only as I, as, as I was pivoting, but as I was partnering with a friend of mine, Dr. Joy Walton, and um, trying to get healthcare workers together to share information about how to beat this thing, like treatment, boots on the ground, I started to notice that a lot of people were having similar feelings that I had of like, I'm powerless and like the world is going up in flames and like nothing good is happening. It's just like a perpetual storm and oh my goodness, like all these people that are dying. Like I noticed that um, a lot of people are having similar feelings, similar thoughts that like that I I can identify with that I can I empathize with and they're having and, and people are having um symptoms and feelings and thoughts that I haven't had as well like it's not like I am <laughs> like I had the experience that encompasses everything it's not like that I'm just explaining my artwork um 
but there, there were, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, I can identify and I empathize with um, frontline people, first responders um, in, in a few different ways. And, um, and then I also like really feel for the people who feel super confused, don't really know who to trust in the news, like while they're doing what they're told to do, like self-quarantining, like there's so many questions about like what's reliable information and you know and so there's this kind of experience of like feeling really powerless feeling confused feeling overwhelmed and um yeah so i i just really identify and i can i can empathize um so anyhow in in my self-care exercise i was thinking not only about my experience but i was also reflecting on these points of connection with um with all of you in the community my friends and family and, and neighbors and um and then i was and then i you know i knew that in this particular self-care exercise there is a whole other side to get to there is a whole other side to kind of hash out and and figure out and um the things that i associated with the positive desired outcome for me, um, based on real things, not just like a hopefulness, like, yes, I want a cure. So like waiting for longitudinal studies, because that's the most reliable, um, or that's the most valid, valid for, for research, you know, in, in the sciences, um, peer review articles, medical finds, things that people are working on right now. I'll, I'll just, you know, Something I can do is I can be patient. I can learn to be patient too when I'm feeling low on patience. I can wait for it to show up in the mail. That's just a metaphor. Probably will show up online. Um, I can play music. I can contribute to the outdoor music concert, online music concert thing that people are doing. Um, at least just, you know, at minimum. At minimum just for my parents and my grandparents. Um, I can try out new recipes, I can do FaceTime, use Wi-Fi when I can, <laughs> when it's working, when things are not crashing, I can try, you know, I can do that, that's something that's within my power and within my choices, um, I can have phone calls, I can take care of the house, I can do a lot of gardening and lawn care, and I can be grateful for all the sunny days, um, and those are just a few ideas, but they're they're real options for me and um there's probably a million more real options too for other people and and maybe for me too and i have yet to discover all of them um this isn't exhaust this is not exhaustive of everything but um i feel like doing this art visual art exercise the place that i ended up drawing last um kind of reflects how I felt at the end of at the end of this uh, this journey of moving from this reflective place of where I started out to where I am um, and it's not like a perfect thing you know like some days I wake up and I'm like a little feeling kind of like this and a little bit like that and a little bit like like all this you know um, and but then I make my way over here and um, after like visualizing it and putting it on paper, it kind of felt like a roadmap. Like I can look at this on days or, or like times of day when it's a little bit harder and it's, it, can, it can feed me. It can be like it's one way that I can be gentle to myself and self-care. Um, and so it kind of felt like, you know, here's like all these flames of what felt like the world just being destroyed um, as I know it and at the end of all this self journal uh, self-care journaling visual journaling in my sketchbook I drew these waves um, because it feels like even if I jump off this cliff and I don't make it to the other side cliff like to the other land I can land in the water and the water is so high up that this cliff is not really like a cliff at all um, I, just, I, can, I can climb onto it if I fall into the water. And it's going to be a soft landing. And it's okay. I can make my way there. 
some days I might wake up on this side and have like a superb day, you know, where it's just all of this. Um, whatever it is, it's, you know, there can, there can be some ebbs and flows with the process and that's okay. So, um, you know, I know I did a lot of sharing and self-disclosure and I think that's something that, I noticed that that's something that happens when I share about my artwork. <laughs> I end up sharing how I feel and things. Um, but, um, you know, that really just speaks to the power of art and expressing, expressing yourself creatively. Um, it's a great way to connect with how you feel, process your thoughts, clarify your thoughts, and use it as a great communication tool to make bridges of understanding and um, connection with others, especially the ones that mean the most to you, that matter the most to you, to share how you're feeling, where you are on the map, and, um, and allowing them to then see it understand it and build their own bridge to get closer to you. Um, yeah, so with that, if you think that that's a good exercise for you, again, in a nutshell, the basic rubric of that exercise, bridging the gap, is you draw uh, a left side of land, basically a right side of land and then cliff side basically like don't connect in the middle and you have a stick figurine jumping off one of them one of the cliffs to try to get to the other side the place that the stick figurine is coming from has the negative beliefs the negative thoughts the negative feelings the worst experience of of whatever you're reflecting on over there the place that it's running towards is where you would like to be. The positive things you'd like to feel, the positive things that you would like to think, the positive things that you would like to see happen, the outcomes, um, and, you know, in your journey. And, and then you reflect on both and maybe a little bit as well of how to get there um, or what would it take to get there from the negative side to the positive side of, of your experiences. I hope this is helpful. I hope that it's, uh, I hope that this video was fun to watch and that um, if you do end up making anything, especially a bridging the gap activity, I would love to see your artworks and hear a little bit about the stories behind your process and your creative artwork. Okay, well, um, like, com comment, subscribe, do all the things, connect with me here, and I will try to continue to give you helpful information for your self-care, for your emotional and mental well-being. Until next time, I'll see you later.